Hey there, Gemini. Welcome to your reading for the week of September 19th. Uh, we're just going to jump right in here, Gemini, and we are going to take a look at your general energies in this first row here. Uh, in your second row, we are going to take a look at where you are at on your path to your destiny at this time. I don't know what I'm, I don't know. I'm trying to come up with a good name for this middle row here, or this second row. So I don't like it, but that's what we're going to call it for now. Uh, next, we're going to look at uh, your next steps at this time in this row here. Anything that wants to come up. Uh, at the end, we are going to look at uh, what you need to hear right now as well in this last row. And then on top of that, we are going to pull three yes or no question cards. And I will give you time to ask your questions. But Gemini, uh, pretty good. You start off with a serendipity card. I love this card. It says bright new prospects are on the horizon. So anything new that you want, I feel is coming in for you. This is tied you know, to the moon. There's that moon behind her there. And you have the moon card in this reading. The moon, you know, outside of being just the typical stuff that people know the moon as, like fears, mysteries, um, kind of continuing on your path and not giving up even in the darkness, things like that. To me, it can represent having an idea and just needing to bring it down to earth. And that's how I feel for you. It's like sometimes the moon is seen as an illusion. I don't really feel like that's true. Um, I feel that the moon says avoid illusions, right? There are actually like four warnings on the moon card, the dog and the wolf, dog and coyote, whatever you want to call it. And then there's two pillars behind those, the dog and the wolf, dog and coyote as well. So those are all warnings to the fool uh, that say, do not get off your path. So basically I think the illusion is being drawn away from what you're doing. You even have this alligator card here next. This alligator card represents your intentions but it kind of represents doing something with intention, meaning you set out to do something, you do it, you see it through to the end. And I feel that's critically important for you this week. So that's what I'd be doing if I were you. Uh, you have the four of wands, the knight of swords and the three of cups here. The four of wands could be marriage <laughs> and you have the three of cups. So some of you could be thinking about a person that you wanna marry, or you could be jumping right in to marriage with a person. It could be a fire sign because you have the sun here as well. I don't know, it looks pretty good. I would say, you know, for those of you that are like getting married or wanting to marry a person, you know, you have the Knight of Swords here, which is kind of like a little bit of rushing energy, kind of rushing into something. At the same time, you have the status card. Uh, so you could be gaining status or marrying into status here. For some of you, I literally feel like you're marrying royalty, not literally, but as in you could just be marrying a person who you see as royalty, or maybe they see you as royalty. Really, I would say there's two people there. So I feel like you both could be seeing each other as very special, you know, almost like royalty, king, king and queen, two kings, whatever, whatever the hell you date, I don't care, right? So I feel you could be really seeing someone as very special. Um, I, again, I feel like you could be rushing a little bit, but uh, this looks pretty good to me. So, you know, for some of you, I don't really feel it's that big of a deal. Uh, for others, I feel like you're trying to rush to a finish line with this card. The four wands can represent a finish line. The knight of swords can represent forcing something to happen. I almost feel like saying, don't allow this to turn into the two of wands. That's literally what's popping into my head. The story about the guy on the two of wands is that he rushed to a finish line. He didn't enjoy the process. He didn't enjoy what he was doing and what he was going through. And so he just like rushed to a finish line and he's like, now what? Now what do I do with my life? And I feel that's what this is saying. It's saying, you know, enjoy the process. You're clearly getting to the sun. You have the sun and the moon. I didn't even realize that you had them right next to each other. And, you know, I feel like you're moving towards the sun, but it's like saying, don't just rush right through it and go to the moon, <laughs> right? I feel like you need to kind of enjoy the uh, process here. You have the three of cups. Three of cups could be a celebration and happiness. I do feel there could be some sort of reunion here, but, uh, you know, Mercury retrograde, I'd be careful of going back to the past as far as X's are concerned. You know, I don't know. You have the three of cups, four of pentacles, the moon. Uh, what I would say here is if it is someone from the past, you know, even look at the bottom here, five of swords, two of swords, two of cups, you know, <laughs> true love. So again, I never do X back readings. I encourage people not to wait for an X. There are plenty of people here on earth. There are plenty of people we can date. Nobody's that special, right? Including me, right? People always think like I say this stuff, like I'm super special. No, including me. If someone was dating me, I would tell them to move on, right? Plain and simple. So what I would say here, is I feel that like for some of you, this could be a person returning, but again, this was never toxic. If, if that's the case, I would say it was positive and this person has changed, you've changed. So if none of that is true, then don't do it. Clearly, plain and simple. For some of you, I feel this is just a person that you knew, you know? So it could also just be a person you've known. With the four wands, you have the eight of cups, more moon imagery. There, uh, There is a 
eclipse happening on this card. It's the only card in the tarot that has an eclipse. Some people do say that the moon card does represent eclipse. Uh, you know, I don't know if you want to read it that way, go for it, but I don't personally, but I would say that for some of you, you could be moving on to bigger and better things in your life, clearly. With the Knight of Swords, you have the Page of Wands. Very enthusiastic. I, get, I feel like you're very enthusiastic. That's why I was saying this is something that's happening very quickly. So again, some of you could be rushing here. Page of Wands, enjoy the adventure. Enjoy what you're doing, right? But I do feel you're very enthusiastic at this time. And here you go with the three cups. You have the Knight of Wands. I, again, I would, if it's someone from the past and they were inconsistent, that would be a big no for me right? No for me, dog, like Randy Jackson, right? No. Uh, if they were consistent, fine. But, you know, the Knight of Wands is a card of the builder as well. It's a kind of a card of building something new in your life. And I feel that's a better use of your time. It's also an energy of being spontaneous. With that full card, you know, coming up in that same diagonal, I would say that being spontaneous could be very beneficial for you. You know, it could be one of those things where you're kind of, uh, working on new projects, but, but kind of staying open to multiple ways of doing things is going to be beneficial, which I feel is true for everyone right now, just because of the astrology. Sorry, I just dropped all the cards, but <laughs> what else is new? Uh, next, you have the alligator. This is coming up in the area of where you're at on your path towards your destiny right now. And the alligator represents doing things with intention, meaning you set an intention to do something and you do it. You see it through to the end. And no matter what, even if you're wrong, even if you're right, right? The alligator is about digest, digestion, digesting something. So if we don't see something through to the end, then we never actually know how something's going to turn out, how something's going to go. Again, sometimes I think when we give up too quickly on something, even if it's a failure, the problem with that is that we don't learn anything from it, right? <laughs> because we didn't see it through to, to the end. So I kind of feel that some of you are digesting something. For others, I do feel there is something that was maybe incomplete that you are completing. Could be a project, could be a business, could be a relationship, you know, take it how it resonates. That's why I say if there ever is a time that you should, this is gonna go against what all the other astrologers say, right? If there ever was a time to go back to an ex, it would probably be during a retrograde because guess what? Even if it ends during the retrograde, at least you'll have learned something. Retrogrades, I always say, to me, I think, most astrologers, not all of them, plenty of them talk like this, right? But most of them say, don't do this, don't do that. And I always say, no, make your mistakes during the retrograde. The whole point of the retrograde is that you learn like 10 times faster. So if there was ever time to make a mistake, it would be right now, right? And so maybe you're digesting something, seeing something through to the end, right? And you know, that that's, that's that. You have the Queen of Pentacles, the Four of Pentacles and the Five of Swords. I do feel some of you are at least thinking about a separation. Uh, with the five of swords for others i'm getting risk like i feel like you're thinking about a risk you have that fool card here um here's the thing is that to me the five of swords can be a good card as far as taking a risk is concerned this would be a calculated risk this is like a risk in business or a risk in your career or even if you're retired maybe you're taking the risk of you know going on a date or something like that something else take it how it resonates five of swords to me usually represents a good risk and here you go five of swords sun nine of cups are you kidding uh, five of swords, two of swords, two of cups, doing something you've never done before with the two of cups, right? So I feel like a risk will be worth it. The fool literally is taking a risk. You have the four of pentacles here. I feel pretty good about this four of pentacles as well. I feel like you're creating a lot of stability in your life, much more stability. Normally, I don't like the four of pentacles, but in your reading, I feel pretty good about it. So I feel you're kind of in alignment. Look how those four pentacles are in alignment. And I do frequently say that when I like the four of pentacles, it's because he has, normally he has a pentacle on his head, a pentacle over his heart. And one of my favorite people of all time, Greg Braden says, when your head and your heart become one, you can move mountains. So I feel you're coming into alignment. Look at this right here. The queen of pentacles in this deck, what you have next, she has a pentacle over her heart right? Her center right there. So all the readings have had something about being heart-based or really needing to follow your heart. The Knight of Wands, he follows his heart. You know, he follows his desire, what he wants to do in his life. He doesn't necessarily listen to anyone, doesn't listen to his mom, his dad, his brother, his cousin, nobody. He listens to his heart. He listens to himself, his desire, what he wants to do, right? And I feel that's very important that you listen to your heart and you kind of move towards 
your intentions with that alligator card, meaning you intend to do something, you see it through all the way to the end, because at least you'll have ended, you'll have learned something from it. Again, when we tell someone, you know, this has come up for a lot of people this week. When we tell someone our ideas and they tell us that maybe it's a bad idea, whatever our idea is, they're trying to protect us from the mistake. But again, I encourage people to make more mistakes. As someone who is like a living mistake, right? Those mistakes, I make, I've made a lot of mistakes, but it's made me very successful. So I encourage people to have these failures. Again, I, I don't know what it is. I think it's school or something that teaches us like, oh, you have to get an A on everything. It's like, uh, no, it really, life doesn't really work like that, right? Um, you know, so that's what I'll say here. I think that it's the people who take more chances that end up being successful. So let's see. Uh, with the Queen of Pentacles, you have the Two of Swords. You have the Two of Swords twice here. Two of Swords, you just have to go to this new island behind you. She's fearing being hurt by these rocks in the water, but if she just took her blindfold off, put her swords down, she would see that it's low tide and she could easily get over here. So I feel for some of you, again, you need to follow your heart and not listen to other people. Uh, with the Four of Pentacles, you have the Ten of Cups. Uh, Ten of Cups is happily ever after. You know, it's a card of happy home, happy family. So really amazing love card, but really for you, I feel it's talking about your happiness. You know, we can use our happiness to attract what we want in our life. The story of the Ten of, Pen Ten of Cups is that they still have to deal with all the problems of the world, these people on this card. So I feel that you have to, you know, of course, deal with all the problems of the world, but it's saying they're choosing to focus on happiness. And I feel if you do that, focus on the sun, which is right next to it, you're going to attract a lot of good stuff. With the Five of Swords, you have the Three of Cups. I told you reunion after some sort of breakup. So Again, take it how it resonates. I, and again, believe me, if you're saying I would never go back to that, you know, back to that big head in, in my entire life, then I sub fully support your decision. But for those of you that had a positive connection that was never toxic or anything like that, then I do feel it's a possibility. And again, I don't give false hope in my readings. I think that readings that talk about exes coming back are giving false hope for the most part, right? I've heard too many stories of people waiting for like 40 years. It's like, that's an entire lifetime. As I I've always say, we used to only live for 40 years. <laughs> so, you know, that's an entire lifetime as far as I'm concerned. I feel like it's, we're much better off moving on to something new. But again, in this case, could be different. Uh, next in the area, uh, what is this? Oh, your next steps. You have this harmony card and you also have the status card. Again, I feel like you could be attracting a person of status or just by you being with a person, it's kind of like there's some sort of increase here where you both gain status by being together with each other. You know, there's two people on that card. So love it. I would definitely be focusing on the sun. There's a big sun right up here. You have the sun in the same row. Focusing on the sun means two things. Number one, the sun in the tarot shines a light on something. And you have the knight of wands as well, which also kind of is your direction, meaning you have to follow your desire. There will be things that will make you feel happy this week. You need to move towards those things. There will be things that bring joy into your life. You need to move towards those things or think more about those things because that will attract abundance and just good things to you. Focus on harmony is what I feel like this is saying. I feel like there's plenty of reasons to focus on everything wrong with the world, of course, but you know what does that do? Nothing is the answer. Uh, so that's what I'd say there. I also feel that, again, there could be love coming in for those of you that want it. You have the fool, the sun, in the Two of Swords. I feel that some, you know, a lot of people really have been getting these cards like the Two of Swords this week. So the universe clearly wants us to take some sort of risk with this, the Five of Swords, the Fool. I feel like the universe just wants us to try new things, do things differently. Again, I feel whenever we're in times of restriction, you know, which we're kind of being restricted, right? With what's going on in the world and stuff like that. I feel like the universe wants us to go the other direction, wants us to take some risks, do some things we've never done before, leave comfort zones, right? You have the Fool. The Fool says, take a leap of faith. I feel like if you're saying to yourself that, you know, wouldn't it be nice if, if you have one of those in your life, it could be anything, it could be a goal. Like maybe you're saying, wouldn't it be nice if I traveled? Wouldn't it be nice if I started this business? I feel this is saying, take the leap of faith towards that, wouldn't it be nice? You know, look, there's a sun in front of her here on this Fool card. Normally the on the Fool card, the sun is behind her. So I feel like you are moving towards the sun in this reading, moving towards happiness and we see the sun here. The sun is a card of joy, happiness. It's kind of also a card of focusing on your inner child. There's something here about that, I would say. I feel it's really important that, yes, like there are problems in the world and there are things that are going on around you maybe, but I feel focusing on those things is just gonna attract more of that energy. I feel you need to focus on joy, happiness, abundance, you know, good things. With the fool, you have the six of wands, card of excellence, card of success. You know, I feel the world needs more of this right here. 
of you kind of being an example for other people. I talk about this all the time that we're entering into the age of Aquarius. And, you know, part of this Aquarius energy is to be a star, right? Aquarius is a star card. And I believe everyone can be their own little star where you could be inspiring other people. Like people always ask me, what's my spiritual path? I'm like, just be your own little star, right? Do something that can inspire other people in your life. And there you go. That's all you need to do. <laughs> and that's what I believe. And, you know, I've seen it happen. So I would go for it with this six of wands. Stand out. With the sun, you have the Ace of Pentacles. Every single person this week has had the Ace of Pentacles. I'm pretty sure. Ace of Pentacles, like some sort of opportunity that could be coming in for you. So definitely a big opportunity. And with the Two of Swords, you have the Magician. And definitely time to use your powers and manifestation. Again, he's pointing to these flowers here and the ground, but the flowers in front of him represent the fact that he knows that he needs to focus on joy, happiness, beautiful things to attract beautiful things in his life. So that's what I would do if I were you, uh, for sure. Uh, next in the area of what you need to hear right now, you have this desk card. It says, pay attention to your work. And you have this horse. It says, short journey. Some of you definitely could be traveling, but I do feel it's like a very busy time for you. I feel the rest of the year, even though we have Mars going retrograde and in your sign and, you know, it could slow things down. I actually feel like you're going to be pretty, you know, I feel like you're going to be pretty busy is what I would say here. It could be one of those things where, you know, maybe you know Mars is going retrograde. So before it goes retrograde at the end of October, it might be a good time for you to kind of like set up some systems or put some systems in place. Like if you have a business or a side hustle, maybe you, if I were you, which I basically am, I'm a Gemini moon, I would be looking at some things that always work in business. And I would say to myself, how can I make sure, like how can I set up a system to make this activity easier in my life so that I make sure that I do it during Mars retrograde until January, whatever it is, right? The middle of January, basically. You might as well just say J the entire month of, until the end of January of 2023 because, you know, the shadow. So what I would say here is set up some systems. Some of you could be traveling though. Uh, you have the Nine of Cups, the Moon, and the Two of Cups. Uh, for those of you looking for a love, I do feel there could be love. Perfect match coming in for you. You also have the Nine of Cups, which is like a wish or fulfillment. So there could be a very fulfilling connection. And like I said, there could be something like royalty, like status, or that gives you status, like I said, with that status card. For others, the Two of Cups represents you and your higher self. So it can represent kind of communicating with your higher self as well. Uh, next, you have the moon card. So we talked about the moon throughout the whole entire reading. I feel like the moon, there are plenty of warnings that exist on like why you shouldn't do something, but I feel like you should take the risk, number one. Number two, I feel the moon is saying you need to bring something down to earth. We can have an idea with the moon to, where we say, wouldn't it be nice if I had uh, you know, a million dollars? Wouldn't it be nice if I started this business? Wouldn't it be nice if I had the perfect relationship? The moon says, well, why don't you? Why don't you go down the path and climb the mountains that are normally at the back of the moon? Because mountains represent achievements. The, mount, the, the moon just says, set the intention, the alligator card, and do not get off your path, right? Like I said, there's four warnings on the moon card. So the warnings are to not uh, fall prey to your imagination. The problem is sometimes we start like a business and then something distracts us. We're like, well, this doesn't seem like it's working. So I'm going to go do this over here. Right. And the moon says, no, don't do that. See something through to the end with the nine of cups. I feel like there could be wishes. I also feel like you need to make a wish with the, uh, nine of cups as well. But, uh, let's see what we get here for you, Gemini, um, at the end. Nine of Cups, you have the Chariot, definitely a victory coming in for you. You need to move towards fulfillment. Again, I feel you have like a wish, right, kind of, that is something that would be very fulfilling for you. It's your wouldn't it be nice if, like I said, that's the best way I can put it. And I feel like the Chariot saying where there's will, there's a way. Make it happen uh, here, Gemini, plain and simple. With the moon, you have the hangman. For some of you, it could be dealing with the Pisces. For others, I feel this is saying, do not delay, get moving. <laughs> Plain and simple. Uh, with the, and, and, you know, the hangman really says you're overprepared for something because, you know, his head is glowing. He's gained enlightenment. He's gained the answers he's, he needs to be successful. With the two of cups, you have the king of wands. Um, sorry, this was not in reverse. Um, the king of wands. King of wands could be a fire sign. You always get fire in your reading. So it could be a fire sign coming in for you. Could be a Leo, could be any fire sign. Um, but what I would say here is I feel like this person is very attracted to you if it's love. For others, this asks you to be bold and assertive, like everybody else has had a card of needing to be bold and assertive right now. I just think it's a collective energy, basically, where pretty much the universe is saying, if you want something, you know, I said it at the beginning of 2022 in the 2022 readings, if you want to be successful, you know, fortune favors the bold. We have to be super bold this year um, to be successful, plain and simple. 
Uh, all right, we are gonna pull three yes or no question cards. One, two, and three, right here. One, two, three. If you need time to pause and to think of your questions, go ahead and do that now. For question number one, you have the Ace of Cups. I would say yes, definitely. Your emotions are overflowing, a lot of happiness coming in for you. For question number two, you have the Empress. Hell yes, definitely. A lot of abundance here. I feel a lot of abundance, but again, it's gonna be through seeing something through to the end. You're gonna have to like see something all the way through to get your reward. And for question number three, you have the page of swords. I would say no on this. I feel immature energy or just hasn't developed. This might be a maybe because if you're asking about something like uh, something brand new, like a new relationship, new business, I feel like it just hasn't been developed yet. So it just needs more time. But other than that, no. Uh, this looks pretty good, Gemini. I love this. So thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But thank you and definitely enjoy your week.